Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Noah from Phonedog.com and this is the HTC Legend. Camera works works pretty well, five megapixel with flash. It's good for a cell phone camera. It's still a cell phone camera, not a, you know, I'm not seeing a, I heard the, the an executive from Nokia this week says something about, you know, cell phone cameras are gonna replace SLR soon. I, I don't think so. But uh, cell phone cameras go, uh, it's pretty good, five megapixel. And uh, HTC has kind of an advanced imaging interface here. I might've shown you this in the unboxing, but you've got kind of some advanced image properties you can control. Um, and then if we go back here, you can tap to, uh, to zoom in and out. You can't do it with the trackball, which I kind of wish you could, but you can zoom with the slider there. And you know, you can see, I'll take a picture of the quarter here and uh, flash turns on. And you know, it's kind of far away. It's coming out a little blurry. Uh, that's to be expected with a cell phone camera. If I take a picture of the incredible box, again, it's kind of dark in here. Um, I can tap to uh, tap to focus there. The autofocus kicks in. And there you go. You know, five megapixel. It'll blow up when you put it on a computer screen or what have you. And we'll go back here to the settings. And uh, so in photo mode, you can go resolution up to five megapixel. If we go to video mode, you can go resolution up to VGA, 640 by 480. Oops, sorry, that was out of frame. 640 by 480. So you're not gonna get uh, high def video capture on this, but for VGA resolution, uh, it works pretty well. You can get pretty good clips and you know upload them to YouTube, share them however you like. So all in all, it's an above average cell phone camera I've found. Uh, again, you know, not many cell phone cameras to me can replace the standalones, but honestly, unless you're printing them out or want to view them at full resolution on your, your monitor, you know, uh, it, it works just fine for on-the-go photo, photo taking. So uh, the thing, you know, with these devices for me is more the, the responsiveness of the hardware and how it feels to type on it using the virtual keyboard and that kind of thing. So you've got, you know, the regular uh, Android keyboard. You can install keyboard replacements if you want to, and I probably would if I was using this phone. Um, I like HTC's uh, layout a little more than the stock Android, and I like their... Uh, text autocomplete system. I don't know if I would. I would at least try some replacement keyboards. Um, you know, the one thing about the 3.2 inch display as opposed to the larger ones, the 3.5 or, or 3.7 or even, you know, the, the HD2 and the forthcoming Evo 4G with their 4 inch plus displays. The the 3.2 inch displays, it's funny to call it smaller because <laughs> not that long ago, 3.2 inch would have been huge for a phone. Uh, but, you know, it's a little bit smaller uh, and it comes into play on your virtual keyboards where you don't have a, a hard keyboard on these phones. And I like to type two-thumbed and it's a little bit small for two-thumb typing. So uh, let's go down to the, uh, not the two field here, but let's go down to the actual composition field here. So the quick brown fox. And you can see as I'm doing this, you know, it's uh, the autocorrect system is definitely jumping in here. And I also hit the uh, period there a bunch of times in between every letter when I was trying to hit the, the space bar instead of the period. Uh, I think, you know, one thumb typing gonna be a little bit better on a display like this, uh, this size, this display in general, um, or, you know, the single finger, which I think a lot of people do. The single finger, is that a dance step? The quick, I was like lazy sheep when I was trying to type. And you can see the, uh, the HTC autocomplete system is really nice, I think. Gives you the options. Very easy to add something to the dictionary. Um, so if I wanted to add, if I wanted to make up a new word, Fox with two X's, I can just tap it and it's saved. Very easy. I really like it. It's a nice system, similar to the HTC system that's been around for a little while now. Uh, but again, the display itself, you know, it's responsive. It works pretty well. But, uh, and obviously you can do, you know, Android style, the long press to get your, your other, your kind of secondary option keys there. But uh, I just think the display, you know, if you're a power user, rapid fire typing, that kind of thing, you have to have fingers that are a little nimbler, maybe a little smaller than mine. Uh, and the two thumb typing, which I personally prefer, uh, 3.2 inches is just a little bit too small for it. So, you know, bear that in mind, but the screen itself is responsive. And again, with Android, you know, there are different keyboard replacements uh, that you can choose to install. Um, you've also got, uh, in the People app here, you've got integration with uh, Facebook uh, and other services, which is kind of cool. And so you can see in my contacts here, here's uh, Candice. 
and that's her Facebook profile picture, and she's got two updates there, and that's her Facebook status that automatically loads. And so we'll tap See, it on. says that she's linked. Uh, I'm blocking out the rest here because you don't need to see your personal information. But you can see that, uh, you know, she's linked via Facebook, and then we will, off camera here, scroll over to her updates and events. <laughs> And uh, a little humor there from Candace laughing at her own use of the phrase piss and vinegar to describe crotchety behavior. Very nice. Uh, so there you go. Uh, it's kind of nice, you know, for somebody like me who doesn't actually like going to the, the Facebook or the Twitter websites or that kind of thing, this integration is nice because you can see people's updates and everything if you want to without having to launch the app and that kind of thing. So maybe not for a power Facebook user or myself. I use Twitter a lot. And, you know, like I said, I, I like to use other Twitter apps. But uh, the integration here, I think, is definitely very cool. And it also, also keeps me up to date with birthdays. I'll see it in here, people's uh, birthdays linked from the various social networking accounts. They'll pop up on here and remind me, which is kind of nice, because I tend to forget that kind of stuff. Um, and then you can also load up photos. You don't need to see that, and we'll get that off screen. That's enough on Candace. Um, you know, photos, details, uh, all that kind of stuff on uh, your different social networking contacts, which is pretty cool. I'm off screen there with the phone because, you know, I was trying to cycle past people's personal information. You didn't see that. So I like the, uh, the use of integration here in HEC, their sense system. Uh, I personally prefer it a little bit. With Moto Blur, um, you know, I like what they've done kind of in, in concept, but the execution is kind of a little bit cluttered for my taste. Uh, the HEC a little more streamlined. That, that's a personal matter, though. You might prefer the Moto, Moto Blur system or, you know, an, a, a different system. Uh, Palms Web OS system, also quite nice, but, uh, you know, Sense, social network integration on the Legend. Uh, what else can I tell you? You know, a lot of it's kind of standard Android, um, but with Sense on top. And for me, a lot of it came down to the performance of the phone um, is acceptable, a little bit better than acceptable. The new version of Sense is definitely a little speedier than uh, the old version, which on the original Hero had some performance lags. Um, the internet browser works well. It's got pinch to zoom, which I'll show you in a second. Call quality was good, both signal and actual call quality. Uh, three and a half millimeter headphone jack work well. Bluetooth compatibility, obviously, also I had no problems hooking it up to a headset or to a computer for file transfer, that kind of thing. Uh, you've got a, a micro SD card for expandable memory. Um, and the web browser is Flash compatible also, which is pretty neat. Although, I don't know how useful Flash on a smartphone is. I did a little informer tw informal Twitter poll the other day. And I uh, got kind of mixed results. Some of you saying, you know, flash on any smartphone's a joke. Others of you saying I use it all the time. Uh, so I don't know. Sound off in the comments here if you have something about that. But in any case, you know, flashlight works on the browser here. And again, here's the pinch to zoom. A little more responsive, obviously very responsive here. More so than when I was showing you in the photo gallery. It might have just been a little glitch with the way I was trying to access it. Uh, we'll go here to my man Mega Doug's site which uh, has a bunch of Flash games on it. I found uh, with the Incredible and this phone and other phones that I've tried that Flash on smartphones works better for kind of lightweight animations and game playing than for watching video. But, you know, Flash wasn't made for touchscreens, so the whole controlling your games gets a little dicey here. So we'll go to uh, megadug.com. You can play his uh, homemade games there for free, some games he made for clients. All that kind of stuff. I'm just giving a little props to my man, Doug, because he works hard. Schoolyard Bully is a really fun game, I think. Uh, better played on a computer than on a smartphone, though. But I was, I was playing bowling the other day. And so we'll go to bowling here, and uh, the flash game will load up. And you can see it loads up quickly. And I can zoom in. And so I'll play some bowling. I'll go with the pink ball. Kind of pink red there. And so there's no mouse. And so it does work. But, you know, it's a little funny, and this isn't a problem with the phone, this is, this is just having to do with, you know, Flash content. So, okay, I've got the Flash content now in its own window there, and so, let's see if I can get it rocking here. There we go, yeah, gutter ball. But it works, right? Flash not designed for touchscreens. Anyway, didn't mean to get off into a rant about, oh, that's a, oh, I thought that was a strike, that was looking good. What, did I get six? Yeah, I got six. Um, but I can, can I double tap to zoom in? Oh, I can pinch to zoom, you can see. I got six. But there you go, it's flash content, it's working. So, you know, if you're looking for flash on a phone, here you go, it works. Works on the incredible as well. Uh, again, for you US viewers who um, don't have the option of picking up the legend on a carrier.
Uh, there you go. My bowling skills getting a little better with each roll. Um, but again, you know, the web browser works quite well, very responsive. Uh, I was going to show you with the uh, storage. So as I said at the top, the, the design of this phone, this phone is an object. I think it's just really, I, I really like it. It's uh, ironic that it's sort of Apple-esque with Apple suing HTC, but the whole unibody aluminum done up in kind of brushed silver with the black accents reminds me of uh, MacBooks and iMacs and iPads and all that stuff. But, you know, whatever, the, that notwithstanding, it's a really nice job in the design, and it feels just kind of more luxurious than your average cell phone. Uh, the rubber makes it, you know, nice and grippable, but a nice heft to it. It's not heavy. It's certainly pocketable, but it feels luxurious. Um, and then what's kind of cool is you open up the end cap here, and that's where you get to everything. Kind of like the, uh, actually like the Motorola Devour too, also a unibody design with kind of a, all your stuff in one spot here. So you take the end cap off, and then you snap this thing open. Those of you who watched the unboxing uh, video, sorry to repeat myself here, but I just think it's kind of worth showing. You've got your SIM card slot and then your micro SD card slot also. So that's where you get your storage uh, for your media files and all that good stuff. Battery life has been fine. Uh, it's kind of what, you know, my rule of thumb these days with a high-end smartphone is if I can use it as much as I want and then I have to recharge it at night after one day, that's kind of the standard for me. And uh, certainly this gets me through a day with, you know, kind of constant use of all the different social networking features and all that kind of stuff. The fact that it's edge only actually probably extends the battery life on uh, 3G. The battery's going to run down a little bit faster. Um, and then it's obviously got GPS as well. Um, oh, I guess I knocked the battery out when I took the back cover off there. But, uh, you know, so battery life's been fine. All in all, it's a big thumbs up for me for this device. The, the real question, you know, uh, is if you're interested in an HTC Android phone, do you wait, do you, you know, do you, if you're in the U.S., do you import this, uh, buy it unlocked, pay a little more, run around edge only, GSM, or do you wait for one of the U.S. carriers to pick it up in some form as like the Hero 2 or something like that? Or do you just go ahead and opt for Incredible, which in a lot of ways is a very similar device, but, you know, bigger, faster, uh, I don't want to say better, but certainly bigger and faster, higher end camera, that kind of thing. So, you know, that's kind of the question. Um, but for what it is, the legend gets a big thumbs up from me. Uh, really dig it. And um, again, yeah, I don't know. The, the more and more, you know, I'm in this spot where I see almost all the phones. I, I see new phones constantly, and that's my job. And so after a while, it's, it, they start to all become, you know, the same in some aspects in terms of the software and the different HTC Sense phones kind of run the same, that kind of thing, and you see the performance differences. But so then I really start to notice the difference in the object itself. And uh, where to me the Devourer was a, a cool looking phone, cool design, but very large. This is kind of a similarly really cool design, but nice and sleek and elegant, and I really like it. Have I said that? I like it. There you go. Legend, thumbs up. If you're in Europe, uh, or I believe in parts of uh, Asia and the Pacific, and you can pick it up on a carrier with the 3G, even better. In the U.S., you're going to have to import it and pay a little more for it, and it's going to be edge only on either T-Mobile or AT&T. And again, nothing I know about any plans to bring this to the U.S. on a carrier, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't show up in some form, although it might get changed, right, because the Hero Sprint changed it a little, uh, Verizon changed it a lot. To, or they'll change it quite a bit. Verizon picked it up as the Droid Era, Sprint as the Hero, so, you know. We'll have to wait and see with this one. There you go. Thanks to HTC for loaning us the Unlocked Legend. More on this phone over on PhoneDog.com and DroidDog.com. I know John's got uh, one of these himself. So check out DroidDog for his take on it. But uh, there you go. My pleasure and a full review of the HTC Incredible coming soon as well. Till next time, thanks for watching. I'm Noah. Don't forget, you can uh, win stuff both on the OnePod Vanna and also as of my shooting this video today, I'm giving stuff away on Twitter. Thanks to HEC and the other companies for sponsoring that. Enough of that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.